Hey, Pastor Ray here. Thanks again for watching Weekly Word. We appreciate you tuning in. Uh, we're into the second season of these, and we pray that God is using this in your life and uh, touching you through these words. Uh, you know, you're, you're welcome to let us know if it's benefiting your life in some way. You can write to me at my uh, email address, ray.still at oakwoodnb.com. I'd love to hear from you about maybe something God has done in your life through these weekly words. Uh, today, I wanna to tell you a story about a guy named Leonard Holt. Uh, Leonard Holt worked for 19 years in Pennsylvania uh, in a mill there. Uh, he was known by everyone. He was a good worker. He showed up for work regularly. Uh, he was active in his community. Uh, he had been a Boy Scout leader. Uh, he had uh, attended a church regularly. Uh, he was really a pretty respectable guy. In fact, he even volunteered uh, for the volunteer fire department in his community. That's why it was kind of shocking when one day Leonard Holt walked in with a gun and started yelling out these words, I'm not going to take it anymore. Come and get me if you can. And he started shooting all of his coworkers. It was a terrible tragedy in that community. And everyone was shocked. What in the world happened to this guy that caused this? In fact, the headline in the newspaper was really interesting. It was just three words. It said, responsible, respectful, and then the last word, resentful. Responsible, respectful, but resentful. You see, what they discovered was, was that Mr. Holt had been passed over repeatedly for promotions. And he saw people be promoted over him that he thought he was better than. And as a result, resentment built up in his heart and that resentment took seed and anger and bitterness took control and then he became a killer. Resentfulness is a powerful thing and it's why God wants us to deal with it. You know, when I think about in the Bible about a guy that had every reason in the world to be resentful, if anybody did, it would have to be Joseph back in the book of Genesis. I mean, you talk about a guy that was wronged and wronged by everybody. If you remember the story of Joseph, his brothers did not like him and they sold him into slavery. They left him thinking he was gonna be dead. They did not want anything to do with Joseph. They lied to his dad and said, Joseph is dead. And they couldn't believe that, uh, no one could believe how cruel their brothers could be towards Joseph. The story goes on that Joseph got picked up, slowed in the, sold into slavery, ends up being uh, the leader of a house of a rich man whose wife has her eye on Joseph. And then he's falsely accused of rape. He's thrown into prison. He meets a fellow inmate that says, hey, I'll remember you when I get out, but the guy forgets him. And then finally he gets out. And finally he achieves great success as the prime minister, if you will, of Egypt. And he saves the people of that world, that part of the world from starvation. It is in that time that those brothers, that all those years ago sold them into slavery, show up to get food. And guess who's head of the food distribu distribution program? It's, uh, it's their brother, Joseph. It's a great story in Genesis, Genesis 45 through Genesis 50 about how Joseph reveals himself. Why wasn't Joseph resentful? Why wasn't the moment that he saw his brother said, man, arrest all of these guys and throw them into, throw them into the jail? No, he didn't do that. And there's some reasons why he wasn't resentful. First of all, it was because he knew that God was in control. He accepted everything in his life as God is in control of my life. God can use even the things in your life and my life that have the potential to build resentment. God can use them ultimately for his good and for his glory. He's the only one that can do that. And Joseph knew that. Not only did he trust God that God was in control, but he was searching for what God was gonna do, how God was going to teach a lesson and show something and do something. And then he was willing to forgive. He was willing to forgive his brothers, not to get re revenge towards them, but to forgive them. 
That's why the verse in Genesis 50, verse 20, if you don't have your Bible handy with you, maybe you're at lunch or watching this and you don't have a Bible with you, remember this verse, mark it in your Bible. It's one of the best Bible, one of the best, best verses in all of the book of Genesis. It's verse 20 of Genesis 50. When Joseph says to his brothers, he says, you meant all that you did to harm me, but God meant it for my good. And God meant it for the good of the salvation of all of these people. You see, Joseph saw the big picture that God was working in his life. And when he saw it, he was willing to forgive. In fact, he was even willing to reach out to his brothers and say, you come, live here under my protection, under my watch care, and under my provision of food for you and all of your families. What a great story. Be responsible, respectful, but don't ever get resentful. Remember to trust God, to depend upon Him, and for what others may mean to harm you with, God will ultimately use it for your good. May God bless you, and we'll see you next week.